Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Tuesday, October 17th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Roblox holds a unique position in the video gaming industry. It doesn't make games. It gives users tools, templates, and more to build their own. And so far, millions of games have been created on the platform. But as competition increases in this space, the company has to figure out how to expand its users and adapt to new technology. At this year's Tech Live, Roblox founder and CEO Dave Bazuki sat down with our reporter Sarah Needleman to talk about this. Here are highlights from their conversation. These days, the company is trying to attract people 17 and older. What are you doing, Dave, to make this uh, platform appeal to uh, this older cohort? How do you make Roblox cool for the college-age kid? Sometimes when we talk about our platform, we like to share this vision of reimagining how people come together uh, to learn, to play, to work together. And we've seen over the last three to four to five years a lot more than just playing. We saw in the midst of COVID, people doing their high school graduation, more and more we see learning environments, some of which just hit the press today. And and since our start, it's it's actually pretty interesting. We, we got our start actually organically growing. So all of our growth was organic and it was driven by the creations that everyone was making on the platform, experiences that are come, fun to come and hang out with. So to actually make Roblox cool, it's hard for us to do it. We, we have to make a platform where the content and the creations are cool for those young people to come and play as they start to get older. We have to build a, a platform that's based on a foundation of civility so um, a nine-year-old is safe as well as a 17-year-old can play something that's a little more engaging. Uh, so it comes back to platform dynamics. As you mentioned now, we, we used to use the term aging up. We don't use that so much anymore because we have more and more 17 through 24 year olds and that's our fastest growing segment. We've, we've added things on the platform recently. For example, when someone has a photo ID and we can validate their 17, we can share a little more grown up type content all on a, a foundation of safety. So it's really like we have to build a platform that organically brings those older people. And now that you have these older players mixed with younger players, um, what are you doing to protect young children from predators? Because we all know that's, that sort of thing happens online. More and more, we're able to use AI to help accelerate a lot of that type of work. You know, every image, every sound, all of the content, more and more can migrate from human review to AI type review. Okay, so you're relying more on technology to handle some of the moderation. Yeah, and what's really elegant is we always, um, of course, have humans in the loop and exception cases and all of that. But AI can do so much, and AI can accelerate how we support civility really on the platform, so it's been an enormous benefit to us. Just this month, Roblox finally launched on Sony's PlayStation. Um, how many users, new users have you gained so far? Because that's the world's biggest console. This has been really exciting. I would say, um, technically, this vision of these 3D creations, whether it's your daughter or some other creator, when they make something, it's, it's gonna work on a phone, it's gonna work on a tablet, it's gonna work on a computer, it's gonna work on a console. And in addition to that, the creations on Roblox over time have auto-translate into different languages. So, uh, so if your daughter made a creation, it will go live in Japan with really good translation. So a lot of people can experience that. PlayStation surprised us. Since we went live on Friday, over 10 million downloads. 10 million. That's, that's a, a big jump right there. We cannot come to Tech Live, of course, without a void uh, and not talk about the metaverse. I mean, sorry, that's so 2022. <laughs> I meant generative AI. Um, you guys have been really <laughs> early adopters of this technology for uh, the development side. Um, what's the motivation behind that hustle? Yeah, I, I, th I think we're in the, um, there's three phases for this. The motivation for us for the last three to four years has been improve quality and lower cost of a lot of functions that humans have done. So trust and safety, image moderation, uh, automating a lot of that, making that work better. The middle one, we're in the middle, is the generative AI, which is extremely exciting. We, we have had the vision um, that just like in the physical world, for example, if we were uh, exploring fashion, for example, 
up until a few years ago, we imagined we would go into a 3D place, we would get cloth and scissors and cut things out and sew it on a virtual sewing machine and try it on and other people could wear it in, a, you know, in Roblox. But what, what I think AI is going to do is go beyond those of us that use sewing machines and scissors and let all of us be fashion designers. So even, even someone like me who's or not me, very good. Or me, right? <laughs> and so we, you and I, uh, <laughs> you and I will, will have a mannequin. We'll say, hey, I'd like to start with a simple white mm -hmm. shirt. I'd like to color the buttons. I'd like it tighter around the waist. I'd like to make it shiny. And we'll be able to support those type of things over time. Is generative AI something that can be applied to the, the player, the user? I mean, not just the person developing it, but is there a way for generative AI to work for the, the kid who's playing and having fun on uh, so, so I, I think the third wave that gets really interesting, for example, is players on Roblox designing their own interactive avatars. Um, we're going back to, in history, we would like George Washington to appear in our experience, and George Washington will be driven by an LLM that has scanned all of human knowledge, and will start to be a pretty interesting person to talk to. Thank you so much for Thank coming. You. Okay. That was Roblox CEO Dave Buzuki speaking with reporter Sarah Needleman. For more coverage of TechLive, head over to techlive.wsj.com. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Julie Chang with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.